back to another video for Fantasy Star Online Blue Burst. In today's video, we're going to be doing another guide for people who are maybe picking up a PSO for the first time. And today, what we're going to be looking at is the mag system in the game. Now, mags are a concept that was introduced. As far as I'm aware, I think PSO might have been the first use of them. But it's something that's continued through a lot of the online games. So there was a variant of it in PSU. Um, and it's also used in PSO2 and in NGS as well. Now, in NGS, if, you've, if you're playing NGS, um, you've probably realized that the mag system is quite basic. It doesn't really do a great deal. You basically just use it for sonar and playing music discs, and that's about it. Um, in PSO, it's a lot more integral to your character. So when you create a new character, so I've got a brand new creator character here. When you create a character, it will be issued a mag straight away. And what your mag is, much like NGS, it's a little robotic follower that just follows your character around. The difference is in PSO, it actually has an impact on your character. So this is our mag here. Now we can't see it at the moment because we're on Pioneer 2, but you will see it when we go down the surface. This is our mag. And as you can see, when you very first start the game, you'll get a level 5 mag called mag. It always starts at level 5, so there's no way of getting a level 1 mag legitimately. Um, it will always have level 5, 20% synchro, no IQ, and it will have 5 defense and nothing else. Now, I think the first thing to do is just go down what exactly the mag does. So, to begin with, the level of the mag. So, mags can go up to level 200, the same as your character. And they have certain levels where they will evolve if certain um, conditions are met, which I'll go into. Synchro. So Synchro is a stat which basically, what this does is it affects the damage of any photon blasts, which I'll go into later. And it also affects um, certain triggers that the mag can meet. So in certain situations, a mag will do a specific action um, and it has a chance of doing that based on the Synchro level of your mag. So the higher the Synchro, the more chance it has of, of doing that trigger action. And again, I'll go into what the triggers are later. And then the IQ, that basically it covers the strength of any specific triggers. So there are, there are certain triggers, for example, like your mag, your mag might cast Rester or Shifter on your character. And the, the level of that and the strength of it depends on the IQ. The most important stats, though, are these four here. So DEF is Defense. POW is Power. DEX is Dexterity. And mind is, well, mind. Now, each of these, these actually influence your character's base stats. So, over time, what you will do in PSO is you'll feed items to your mag. And this might be familiar to if you've played original PSO 2 because you also feed items to your mag in that. Now, in this game, the way this differs to PSO 2, in PSO 2, the stats that it gives you are just a nice bonus that you get to your character stats. But in original PSO, it actually affects your character's base stats. So what this means is you can actually give, for example, a high level mag to a low level character and it will allow them to equip things earlier. So the way the stat distribution works is for defense, you can get you will get one DFP, which is defense power, or every one point of DAF on your mag. So at the moment, this mag is giving us five defense power. POW. For every one level of power, you will get two attack power. Or So this can give you, potentially, if theoretically you could get this to 200, it would give 400 attack power. But because I've said you can only get five defense minimum on a mag, um, this will always be a maximum of 195, and even that's very hard to get to. So dexterity. This one, because the requirements are a lot, lot lower for a lot lower for accuracy, what you find is that the the way Dex works is every two points of dexterity gives you one ATA, which is attack accuracy. And then mind works the same as power. So mind is for every one point of mind, you get two mental strength. So you can actually buff your character's stats up. So if you look at my stats on the um if you look at my stats. So if you look here on the right hand side what you can see is we've got our base stats which are the ones with nothing equipped on the right hand side so we have 18 defense power but you can see we've actually got 23 and the reason we've got 23 is because of that five defense increase so that that's where that's coming from basically so 
it and see we are getting that little bonus from the frame as well um but the, basically the the mag is actually boosting the base stat so now that i've removed the armor what you can see is we have 18 defense without the armor equipped we have 23 with it equipped but if i was then to de-equip my mag So I've now de-equipped my mag, and you can see our defense has now dropped to 13. So the mag actually influences your base stats. So again, I'll show you that again. So if I now equip the armor, what you'll see is our defense goes up to 18. So we get that five, you know, that five defense from the armor. But our base defense hasn't increased. That's still at 13. Now if we equip our mag again. You can now see that the base defense has now gone up to 18. So it's the base stats that your mag actually influences. So that's a, a very basic primer of how the stats work. So the next thing we need to cover is actually feeding your mag. So what I'll do is I'll go down to the surface just so you can see the actual mag as well. So as you can see, this little sort of orangey red guy behind us that's our mag now the color of your mag actually depends on the a few things so all mags that you get when you create your character like this one your mags color will depend on the color of your outfit so certain outfit colors will give certain mag colors so a good thing to do is to actually learn which mags are connected to which outfit colors and then it means you can tailor the mag to what color you want so you could just create your character with an outfit that you might not want to use later on just to get the right mag color and then change your character's outfit. Um, it's not like NGS where if you change your outfit colors, your mag color will change. Um, in PSO, they, they are separated once you've created the character. There are also another way to get mags though. So in the mines area of episode one, I don't think they drop anywhere else. Um, but in mines, you can actually get mags as a box drop as well. There'll always be again this level five basic mag, but the benefit of the mines drops is that they can actually come in special colors that you can't get from um created mags that are created when you make a character so if you wanted a special custom color you, you can go that way as well but typically um a lot of people will just go with the mag that they start with the sound mag so the next thing we need to look at is how to how to raise the mag because obviously at the minute all he's given us is, is fire defense so what you do is you open your main menu and you want to go to mag select the mag you want and in this menu, you've got two options. You've got Fort on Blast, which we can't look at at the minute because this mag doesn't have any Fort on Blast at the moment. And we've got Give Items. So this is the way you raise your mags in PSO. So you go into Give Items, and what it'll do is it'll show you a list of the items that you can feed your mag in your inventory. So at the moment, all I've got that I can feed it is Monomates or Antidotes. Now, this is the downside of, of PSO. So... You can't see what these items will actually raise or decrease because they can actually decrease um, the level up bars as well. You need to know that information. So what I would recommend is um, when you are leveling a mag for the first time, look on some wikis or look on the FNA wiki, look on PSO World. Um, they have a lot of information about what items will level what stats for specific mags because it also differs for each type of mag as well. So I know that for base mags, because I've played the game a lot, I know that monomates raise power and this character is a ranger she's going to need a decent amount of attack decent amount of attack power to do damage with her guns so i'm going to raise that um power first so all you do is just select the item you want so i'm going to choose a monomate and you can see what the stats do once you select it so what you can see is we got a three percent increase in synchro our iq went up by three and we've got a tiny bit of defense a tiny bit of dexterity and a decent chunk of power. Now what you can see is though the, the defense and the dex and power haven't increased. And the reason for that is because these bars here are kind of like experience bars. Once these fill, that level will increase by one. So each mag feed that you get, you can feed a mag every three and a half minutes. And each time you can feed it three items. So we'll just feed it another two monomates. And by feeding it this third one, we get a mag level up. And you can see that the power has now gone up to one. So this mag now, if we go into our stats, 
And what I will do is I'll de-equip everything. So if you look now, we have 23 attack power, a base. So, again, I probably just need to remove my camera just for this so you can see. Big problem with PSO, there's nowhere good to put your camera. So, on the right here, you can see we've got 23 base attack power. And this is with nothing equipped. If we now go to equip our mag, you can see it now increases our attack power to 25. So it gives us a 2 attack power increase. And that's because, like I've said previously, each one level of power will give you 2 attack power. So we equip that, put in our stats, and you can see we've now got 25 attack power. So the mag is directly improving our stats, which is why they're so important to level up. So really, you do want to be trying to level your mag as much as possible, uh, because it will give you very, very sizable stat boosts, particularly later on. So we'll re-equip our items there. So now, if I try and go and feed my mag again, you can see it's now greyed out, and it won't let me. And that's because I, I now need to wait another three and a half minutes for that mag timer to reset. Okay, so now we've switched it up to our uh, higher level character. And you can see that, again, we've got a mag floating with us, but this one obviously looks a lot more um, developed. So so this mag that I've got is a mag called Sato, and this is a final evolution mag. So how mag evolution works. So when you get a mag, as I've said previously, it will be level 5. Now, that mag will evolve at level 10 normally, and it will evolve into one of three different mags. So... Generally, the way it works for level 10 mags is for hunters, you'll always get, I believe it's called Varuna. For rangers, you'll get Kalki. And for forces, I think it's called Rutra. And that just depends on the, the character that levels at level 10. So that's how that works. So, And at level 10, they will also learn a, their first fort on Blast as well. And the Photon Blast is much like PSO to NGS. It's an ability you can use um, every so often that does you know, a variety of different things depending on the Photon Blast, really. So in NGS, they're all damage-based, but in PSO, they do a variety of things. So there are Photon Blasts like Fowler or Pillar that hit enemies all around you. There are more focused damage Photon Blasts like Gola or Estela. So Gola hits one target in particular. Estela hits a few targets straight in front. You also have, there's a, there's a healing Photon Blast called Layla, which I believe also restores your TP as well. So it's quite useful for forces. And there is also a Photon Blast called Myla and Eula. And that is um, a Photon Blast that casts a level 21 Shifter and D-Band as well. So that's very, very useful for some uh, characters, particularly for androids, because they don't get access to Shifter and D-Band normally. So by getting that, it, it gives them a nice way of being able to access Shifter and D-Band every so often. Um, it's also useful for what are called Photon Blast Chains as well. And a Photon Blast Chain is where if you're playing multiplayer, you basically wait for everyone to get a Photon Blast. And then if everyone does their Photon Blast within a certain couple of seconds, they'll actually all chain together. And what it does is it, it amplifies the damage of the Photon Blast and it also amplifies any Shifter and D-Band or Rester effects as well. So that's worth doing. So quite often in a multiplayer game, particularly in harder areas, you'll quite often save your Photon Blast until everyone's got a Photon Blast ready. And then you'll all chain them together. The way you know when your Photon Blast is ready as well is on the top left of the screen where your HP and TB gauge is, this circular gauge here with the zero, this is your Photon Blast gauge. Now, as I go through here, A couple of enemies. And what you'll see eventually. You can see that fort on blast gauge is now increased to one. And two. Three. It's out four. And you can see the, the circular gauge here is starting to build slowly as well. Once it gets all the way around to 100. You'll hear an obvious chime noise, and that's when your Photon Blast is ready to activate, and you can use it at any point from then on. And the way you access it is, on your pallet, if you hold the right bumper and go to your secondary pallet, your Photon Blast will appear on here. So where I've got Gel and Zalo, and yeah, that's either GIF, I think that's GIF for you or Rafoy. I think it's GIF for you, I think. Um, those icons will actually change to the Photon Blast icons. 
Now that does mean that you can't access the, the normal skills on this palette once you've got a Photon Blast. So what I'd recommend is um, don't have anything too important on your right palette because it will get blocked by the Photon Blast once you've got one. So, go back to the evolutions. So we've already covered the level 10 evolution. So the next one is at level 35. At level 35, there's a little bit more involved to the evolution. So then what it does is it then depends on whatever the highest stat is of the mag. So if power is your highest stat and the mag is a Varuna, it'll evolve into a specific mag. If mind is the highest stat and it's a Kalki, it'll evolve into something different. So there is a little bit more branching paths of what the mag can evolve into at level 35. And at level 35, it will also learn its second fort on Blast as well. Next up, we have level 50. So at level 50, again, it's even more complicated. So at level 50, the mag will evolve into another evolution. And this will depend on... This depends on, again, the stat distribution of your mag. But it also depends on your character's section ID as well. So I've actually got a little guide up here. So what I'll do is I'll switch over to that for now. Okay, so, so this is the FNA guide that you can see now. And this is um, on the FNA wiki, so I'd recommend going and looking at this or, or other sites like PSO World as well. This has all the information that you need about mags as well. So if we go down to the evolutions, so once we get to our level 50 mags, what you can see is, say for example, if we want to go for a Garuda mag, so this one here, you can see that for a Garuda, we need either... A green hill, blue full, pink hill, oran, or white hill, hunter or force. And dexterity has to be higher than power, and power has to be higher than mind. So there is quite a lot to remember. Um, so I would really, really recommend looking at a guide like this, just so you don't mess your mag up, because there is no way of resetting stats on your mag. Um, this server might have a way of resetting them through a command. I'm not 100% sure, but typically, particularly in the official versions, there is no way of resetting your mag. It would be a case of, Deal with it or we'll get a new mag. Another example, say if we want to go with a Naga. So Naga, we need a force, as you can see. If the force is green hill, blue full, pink hill, or white hill, then power has to be higher than mind, which has to be higher than dex. Alternatively, if the force is Viridia, Skylight, Purple Num, Red Rear, or Yellow Bows, we can get away with either Mind greater or equal to power, greater or equal to dex. Or we can go with power is equal to dex, which is greater than mind. So it is quite complicated once you get to this stage. So again, just look at these wikis to make sure that you've got the right stat distribution for your mag. Uh, and you can see as well that at level 50, we also do learn a, a, our third fort and blast. Now, there is actually more evolutions after this. So um, there is a fourth evolution. And these are these, what I would refer to as the special evolutions. So the Sato that I'm using is one of these. So these special evolutions, the way these work is they can occur at any point from level 100 onwards, and it's every 10 levels. So if you have the stats at level 100, it'll evolve. If you don't, it won't. At level 110, it will check again. And if, it, if the stats are correct at 110, it will evolve then. And you've got any point up to level 200. So, for these ones, there is very, very specific requirements for them, and they're even more complicated than the level 50 evolutions, unfortunately. So, say if you want this Sato that I'm using, because it's a really cute mag. What you need is, you need a female force, so not only just a force, it has to be a female force, so you could only use a formal or a full new world. That force also has to be either Viridia, Blue Full, Red Rear, or White Hill. And the stat distribution has to be the total of your defense plus your dexterity has to equal the total of your power plus your mind. So an easy way of doing this for Sato is leave the defense at 5, raise dex to 45, and then have either power or mind at 50, and the other one at 0. And that's a really easy way of getting that balance out. And then what will happen is if... If a female force with those section IDs levels it to 100, it should evolve into Sato. Now, a little restriction with these mags is these are treated as kind of rare mags, but, and you can tell it by their name being in yellow. 
once a mag evolves into one of these, it cannot evolve into anything else. Now, you might think, well, why would it evolve into anything else? That's the final evolution of mags. And that's where things get a bit more complicated again. So there's also um, these things called cell mags. And what cell mags are, they are mags that you get through an evolution by using an item. So as an example, if we look at... Let's say we want to go with the panzer's tail, which is basically like a little cat tail. For that, we need an item called the panther's spirit, which I think is normally from a like a rare rappy, usually from like egg rappies and things like that. Um, you basically need to use panther's spirit on a level 50 or higher naga, um, and that's the requirements you need for that. There is also more ones with different requirements as well. So if you want Suniti, for example, you have to use Cell Mag, cell mag 502. It has to be on a level 100 plus mag. That means any mag, not the one called mag. And your character has to be either Viridia, Scarlet Light, Purple, Num, Red, Rear, or Yellow Bows. So you can see there are requirements for these. Uh, and again, if you have evolved your mag into one of these fourth evolution mags like Sato, you cannot evolve it then into a Cell Mag. So you would typically just make sure you don't have these requirements and then use a cell. So it is it is quite complicated. And again, I, I can't stress enough how important it is to actually um, make sure that you're looking at these wikis to make sure you've got the right stat distribution. So if we go back into the game. So the next thing I want to cover quickly is mag triggers. So each mag, as I mentioned briefly earlier, has what are called trigger actions. And they are affected by, I believe it's by the, the IQ influences how effective those triggers are if it's uh, a buff or a heal. And the synchro affects the chances of those activating. So each mag has different um, trigger actions. And there are normally four different trigger states. So a mag can go into trigger if... So when you reach a fort on blast... When you hit when you hit 100 pb which is this gauge here again when that gets full there is a chance that it will trigger a trigger action on your mag it will also have a, have a chance of triggering if you enter a boss arena the third trigger is if you get reduced to i believe it's if you get reduced to one tenth hp so if you're on very very low hp your mag might do a trigger and the other one is if you die now there's only one trigger if you die which is it has a chance of reviving you. Um, so, so some mags actually have a chance of reviving you when you die. Now, it is a very, very low chance. Um, it's at, In all the time I've played PSO, I've maybe only noticed it two or three times. It seems very, very rare. Um, typically, though, you'll notice the, the triggers for entering boss arenas or hitting 100 PB, things like that. So if I go to my mag menu now, you can see that this is my level 200 Sato. So this is at maximum level. And I've got it at 5 defense, 145 power, 50 dex, and 0 mind. So this gives me 5 defense, 290 attack power, 25 dexterity, and no mind. Now, what you'll find later on is that you probably want to raise another mag to help you maximize some of your stats. So for a hue new world like this character, I would probably want to raise another another mag that has some mind on it. Because hue new world's mental strength natively stops quite far short of its actual maximum cap so again if you look at my um well, in my stats at the moment i only have 681 mental strength and i know that the the max for a hue new world is about 1100 and something so i'm way off that so i'd probably want to level a new mag with some more mind maybe some maybe a bit less power as well just because i can hit the power cap quite easily so you might just want to think about leveling a new mag once you get to a higher level just to help maximize your stats a little bit easier. Um, if you look again at my mag here, we've got three Photon Blasts. So if I go into the Photon Blast menu, you can see I unfortunately have Fala because I messed up really early in the game. Um, I would not recommend Fala as a Photon Blast. It, it does next to no damage. I would, at the start in Photon Blast, I would probably go with Estela. Um, Layla has some limited uses particularly for a force because I, I believe it does restore tp as well gradually so it's maybe worth it for a force but typically i just go with estela pillar's not a bad um photon blast for hitting flying enemies and things around you 
The only downside with Pillar is it is treated as light damage, and there's a lot of things in Ultimate in particular that are just immune to light. So quite often you might find that you use Pillar and it does no damage at all. So just be aware of when you're using it. Um, Myla and Eula I would recommend on pretty much any mag. Even if you don't necessarily use it on your character much. You know, on a Hunia world, I have level 20 shifter and D-band anywhere. And this gives me level 21. So it's not really much of a difference. Um, it's generally not really worth using when I'm soloing. But if I'm partied with other people, having Myla and Eula is really, really useful because... If no one else has it, when we do a Photon Blast chain, I can use it and make sure that we all get a massive Shifter and D-Band buff. So, that's why that's there, really. But for some character classes, it's really important to have Myla and Eula, like androids, because it's the only way they can get a reliable Shifter and D-Band outside of... I think it's the, the S-Red Daggers can give you a very low Shifter and D-Band with their special attack. But typically, this is the most reliable way of getting Shifter and D-Band on an android. So, and you can see we've got a 3 4 blast there. I should also note that there's no way of changing these now. So, because your, your final Photon Blast, you learn level 50. Um, the level 100 mags don't learn a new Photon Blast and don't overwrite old ones. They, once you've got those 3 Photon Blasts, that is, that is them setting and you can't change them. So, what you'll also see as well is that even though my mag is level 200, I can still feed it. And the reason for that is because when you die your mag synchro level drops and obviously the lower the synchro the the lower the chance of triggers activating and things like that and also i believe it also affects some damage on your photon blast as well so typically you want to try and keep this high now mine's only at 67 and that's because i've done some videos recently where i deliberately died to show some things in ultimate so i really want to level this up more now once your mag's at 200 you can't increase any of these stats anymore so really it doesn't Matter too much what you feed it then. Um, a really good one to feed though, if you are leveling synchro, is star atomizers. So by using star atomizers, you get a three percent increase to your synchro. Now we've got it back up to seventy six now. So every three and a half minutes, I'll just feed that again and just keep pumping it with star atomizers or any other item that increases synchro. And all that will happen with these bars is once they get to full, they'll just stay full. Um, if I use an item that reduces one of these stats, the bar will drop. But even when it gets down to empty, it, it won't level down the stat. Um, you can't level down any of these stats once you've leveled them. So don't worry too much about what you feed it at level 200. So that's a very, very basic guide into how mags work in PSO. They are fundamentally important to your character. Um, I would say more so than pretty much any other fantasy star game. Maybe in PSU... They're, they're really important as well because you do use them for synth and items, but in PSO, because they actually influence your character's base stats, they are massively important to, to level. So just make sure that you're using wikis and making sure that you're using the right items for your mag. Because what I should also note as well is that when you're feeding mags, different mags have what are called different feeding tables, which each feeding table means that the items will level different things. So... Just because, for example, just because a die mate levels power up by a reasonable amount on one mag might mean it reduces it on another mag if it's on a different feeding table. So just make sure that you're looking at those guides and make sure that you're aware of what items level what stats for each mag evolution that you get. Um, ultimately, though, don't worry too much about the, the stat distribution of your starting mag. You know, if you're a hunter, just make sure you've got a lot of power and a decent amount of dex so you can hit things. If you're a force, obviously make sure you've got a lot of mind on it. But don't worry too much if there's like the odd stat out of place here and there. You can always level another mag later on if you want to. So, for now, I'll call that one there. If you've got any questions about mags, um, just leave them in the comments below and I will try and answer what I can. Um, or if there's anything in particular you want to know about PSO in general, um, I've played this game for years so I know quite a bit about it and I can probably help out if anyone's got any questions. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, uh, please consider liking or subscribing, and I will see you guys in the next video.